everyone. Welcome back. Hopefully you are nice and fed and hopefully warmer. It feels a little less cold in here now. So yeah, thanks for coming back. So next we're going to be talking about securing CID, CICD pipelines. We have Shripad and Jim over here. So they're going to take it off. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, and welcome to this talk. Uh, and yeah, as we say, we are going to talk about protect the pipe. Right? It's a policy-based approach for securing CICD pipeline. Uh, just to introduce ourselves, my name is Shripad. I'm a senior technical staff member at IBM Research. I'm currently leading uh, some innovations around supply chain security. And I'm a member of tech security and supply chain security working group. Hey everyone, I'm Jim Baguadia, co-founder at Nermata, I'm also a maintainer of Kiverno and do other things around the Kubernetes project. Yeah, so why we are talking about security, right? So if we revisit our software supply chain, so it starts with the developer writing code, pushing it to some source control systems like GitHub, GitLab, which then eventually triggers our CI CD, right? It, and uh, CI pipeline specifically, we run multiple uh, DevSecOps checks, we run, uh, we have Git client, we run some static scan, uh, we generate as bomb, we build our uh, artifact, and finally we push them, right? So in this, uh, we push and deploy our application on the runtime. Now in this whole spectrum, right? So if we look into CI CD, this is very critical uh, section, right? Why it is critical? is because there is a growing open source ecosystem around uh, CI CD pipeline where uh, multiple ready to use uh, tasks are getting basically being available on into marketplace like Tekton catalog or uh, GitHub Action marketplace. And just like we are securing our open, uh, our open source dependencies for our applications, we need to pay attention to basically securing uh, these uh, CI CD open source element as well, right? And the other aspect is our CI CD pipelines, they have access to a lot of uh, critical user credentials, right? For instance, we have GitHub client which need access to our uh, uh, Git, uh, Git OAuth token, so it can basically push some uh, changes or create a pull request automate, uh, to automate some of the tasks. We have our build system, uh, which essentially has access to our uh, registry credentials, so it can push images. So they have access to this lot of credential, uh, critical uh, information, credentials. So we need basically right way of securing our pipelines so uh, it, ca it cannot be compromised. And now in today's talk, we are going to primarily talk about four technologies right, and how they come together. We're going to talk about Tekton as a CI-CD platform. Uh, but again, this, uh, uh, the scope of this talk is not limited to Tekton, right? It applies equally to other CI platforms like uh, Jenkins or uh, GitHub Actions. We are going to talk about Sixtor, Intoto, Kiverno, and how these all technologies come together to our rescue. So first, uh, talking about Tekton, right? It's a cloud-native CD building blocks. It runs natively on uh, Kubernetes. It has a bunch of CIDs, uh, like it has, we have pipelines, we have tasks, uh, Pipeline encodes the task layout, like how, what is the workflow that you want to execute. A task encodes the execution logic. We have task run, pipeline run, uh, which encodes the execution trigger properties. And Tekton, again, has multiple dimensions, right? So one dimension is Tekton Chains, uh, which is a new project which has uh, about the supply chain security of pipelines themselves. It creates an automated attestations of the task runs as they execute. Then, as I said, there is an open source catalog uh, for ready to use Tekton task. And then there's one uh, element that we're going to talk about more in detail is Tekton bundle. Like it allows basically us to uh, package and distribute this Tekton task uh, and share them as an, through an OCI, as an OCI artifact. The other project, again, in Toto, it's an open extensible uh, metadata standard. Uh, it, it is used to basically uh, encode the software, software supply chain uh, tool chain, right? How, what is the workflow that you expect and create an attestation of those and again, uh, create a verification of those uh, uh, through some automations. Uh, Sixtor, again, I think not, uh, all of you probably already know, so uh, this is uh, basically emerging as this uh, public infrastructure for signing uh, software uh, artifact. And in this work, we are essentially using it to sign uh, various Tekton resources. 
which includes our pipeline definitions, configurations, policies, images. Uh, we sign them using cosign. We store those artifacts into artifact store. Uh, we are using uh, OCI as the artifact store for storing all this. And uh, it, it has uh, the six store, it's, it's basically it has broader scope. It has record for transparency log, full CO for key management. Uh, and then we are Kiverno. I think Jim is the best person to explain that. Yeah, so Kiverno is a policy engine that was designed for Kubernetes. And what it does is it kind of uses Kubernetes' declarative configuration management system to manage policies itself. So the goal of Kiverno was not just enforcement or validation uh, or checking of resources, but also to automate security, right? So to be able to generate resources, mutate resources in a first class manner, was very important to Kiverno from the beginning. And as you'll see in the examples, this gives you a very powerful toolbox to use similar patterns that you would with any Kubernetes controller, any Kubernetes you know, uh, CRD or definition, and take that into policy management itself. Yeah, so we want to switch to the other. Yeah, let me pull up a bigger view of this. It'll be easier to see. Uh, There we go. Yeah, so we essentially uh, came up with this deciduous uh, attack to the threat modeling for the Tekton, right? And uh, I think you are probably familiar with the legend. So the boxes in the uh, in the gray, they are they basically represent the facts. Uh, the uh, pink boxes they represent the uh, attack uh, vector, and then the blue essentially represent how we can secure them. Yeah. So uh, for Tekton, if you look into this, it as we just discussed, right? It has the uh, it starts with the pipeline, the definitions, right? We have the pipeline definitions that encodes uh, the workflow, like what are the tasks that you can be executed? What is the order in which these tasks can be executed? Uh, then each task it has a certain steps, right? Set of steps that uh, encode the execution logic. Like uh, in this particular task, uh, I want to execute this particular steps. Each step it's run as this uh, container as a the pod and on the Kubernetes cluster, right? And in this particular workflow or in this particular spectrum, there are various attacks that are possible that uh, Jim is probably going to uh, explain in detail. Yeah, so before I go into that, just if you're you know wondering what Decidius was, and I had to look it up a few weeks ago uh, when I started you know uh, work on this tree. So apparently uh, Decidius means that you know trees where I guess they shed their leaves every year, so something which is temporary or with changes, right? Which is a nice tie-in into the security context here because security is always changing. And every organization will probably have you know, different needs for their security concerns itself, right? So what we did over here, like you know, Sripad mentioned, we have three major facts, right? So you have your pipelines, you have your tasks, and then you have your steps. All of these are operating as native Kubernetes resources. Each one is gonna you know, run several containers. Each step runs as a containerized image. So every possible attack you can imagine on Kubernetes also applies to Tekton. And of course, now you're, because you're building your software itself, it's almost exponentially critical here, right? So some of the things we did, and this is not a complete picture, right? So don't take this as a representation you can you know, kind of take and put into production, but the idea here is to come up with, okay, what can we enforce, what should we check? And you know, the exercise that Sripad and I went through is, can we convert these into policies expressed by Kiverno? So the first thing we check for is to make sure that every, ev anything that executes is you know, executing from a pipeline bundle, right? So that's, that's one policy. The next thing we checked is to make sure that you cannot just run tasks without pipelines. Now, um, Tekton, like Kubernetes, again, is very flexible. It lets you run, you know, just like in Kubernetes. If you want to run a pod, you can, but it's not a good idea. You'd rather run a deployment or some other controller. So similarly, in here, the idea is instead of running tasks, you run a pipeline, and better yet, run a pipeline with a signed bundle, which is securely stored in your OCI registry, right? So those are some policies up there. But then every step, like I mentioned, runs as a container. 
So at that point, you want to make sure that that step is secure. It has the right pod security or, well, in this case, step security context or, um, you know, the same uh, definitions that you would apply to a container like run as non-root, don't elevate privileges, things like that, you want to enforce for that step. Um, similarly, you know, in, in a Kubernetes environment for your workloads, you would run each workload in a namespace. Uh, hopefully, we all know that's the best practice to use namespaces for segmentation. So similar year, what we did is we applied namespacing to say every time you execute your pipeline, it should be in its own namespace, right? So, and once you have a namespace, you can generate security defaults. So going back to what I mentioned about Kiverno and the fact that it's to automate security, so why not generate those defaults instead of having to manually configure them or um, you know, come up with some other processes for them, right? And then finally, you know, besides checking for signatures, we also came up with policies with check for attestations in, um, in total format. Um, and so this is to verify that the images actually have a scan performed. You can even check how recently the scan was performed or what type of vulnerabilities you might want to allow or prevent, right, or, or block from executing. Um, and then, of course, signatures for all the images uh, was the final policy you see over here as a leap, right? So that's the, the kind of attack tree that we came up with. Now, of course, again, this, is, this will vary based on your organization's needs, but hopefully it gives you an idea, and I found this a pretty useful exercise of you know, organizing um, this in terms of you know, the, the facts, the possible attacks, the mitigations, and the end goal, right, of the attacker, which is to get access to your cluster or to your host. And anyhow, by the way, there's an app, if you're not familiar with it, it seems pretty cool to go, and it was fairly easy to model and, um, you know, kind of uh, draft this up. So with that, you know, let's go into you know, actually looking at some of this in action itself, right? So I'm going to switch. Um, let me, let's make sure... Yeah, so I'm not going to cover this policy list. Well, I already spoke about them briefly, but let's go to the demo and see this in action itself, right? So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to actually kick off a pipeline because it takes a while to run this, and you know, I guess uh, with different Wi-Fi speeds, et cetera, this might take longer. So let me go, and like I mentioned, um, on my cluster, right, so... We already have Tekton and other things installed, including Kiverno. So I'm just going to show you that the policies I have installed for Kiverno, they roughly match you know, some of what we just talked about. And what we'll do is, first thing I'm going to try and do is um, run this pipeline um, outside of a namespace, right? So instead of just creating a namespace, let me just do um, I'm going to say, and the sign pipeline, I'll show you what this is if I go into um, all of the declarations. And by the way, we have this available as a Git repo, so you can look at this later. If I go in here and look at sign pipeline, it has a run step. And the run step is very simple, right? All it's saying is, in this pipeline, I want to execute it from this bundle. And you know, it doesn't have any namespace or anything de defined, so I can just run it in any namespace. So if I try this, you know, what I'm expecting to happen is it gets blocked. It says, no, I need a namespace, right? So let's go ahead and create a namespace for this. And I think I already have something called run, so I'll just call it run2. Um, whoops, we want to say create namespace. And now that we created that namespace, let's go and see what happened in the namespace itself. So I see that there are already some things populated for me, like secrets, you know, there should be a role, a role binding. So this is everything this pipeline needs to execute. And Kiverno has automated that. So the way that that got, you know, populated, if I go into my policy set that I have over here, um, for security, we looked at, you know, some of this, you know, uh, to, to block those resources. But if I go and show, let me make this bigger, some of these policies which are you know, actually generating 
even things like PVCs, right? So um, Tekton shares information through volumes, right? So you can configure this in many different ways. But here what we're doing is we're creating a volume and we're you know, creating the PVC in there to make it easy to, you know, to now execute that pipeline. So now that we have that in here, if I, um, I haven't executed my pipeline, so let's go ahead and do that. So if I do run, uh, and if I say create signed pipeline, that should start the execution of my pipeline. And we can see, and you know, it should spin up the pods in a few seconds. And we can look at this also from uh, the Tekton dashboard, right? So let's go back here. If we look at it as pipeline runs, we should see there's a new pipeline run and it has started executing. So these are the different steps that are in the pipeline. So maybe Sripad, if you wanna quickly explain what this pipeline does. Yeah, so this is, yeah, so this is essentially a, a template pipeline that we have created. And it, it incurs uh, a typical uh, steps that we see in uh, most common pipeline, right? And this is, a, again, shorter version of it. So it starts with cloning the repo, which essentially is getting uh, the artifact uh, into the workspace. Then uh, we run some static scans on this, uh, uh, like GoSec, which if it is a Go application, it checks for it uh, statically or check for vulnerabilities in the core. Then we have, uh, Okay, this is not showing. So we have build and push. Then once we have pass those, it essentially build and push the uh, registry, uh, the image to OCR registry. It signs them uh, with cosign, and uh, it also adds the attestations, right? So uh, we, we see this, there is generate bomb. We generate the S bomb, again, attach it to the, uh, to the build image. It runs a vulnerability scan, and again, create an attestation for it. And finally, if it, you see there are no vulnerabilities, uh, all the attestations have been created properly, then it go, goes ahead and deploys it, uh, this particular application on, onto the cluster. Right? Uh, again, this is not meant to be used in production, but this is uh, just to give a context and uh, uh, some scope for us to basically play around with this demo. Right. So yeah, it should take maybe a couple of more minutes to yeah. finish, but yeah. Yeah, so typically, I think the last time I tried it, it took about five to seven minutes to go through all the checks. And obviously, as you're adding some policies, you know, there is some time added to fetch data, because some of this data comes from OCI registries. And let me quickly show you, while that's going on, what some of these policies look like, right? So if you go back to the policies, um, one of these is just to require a bundle. So that we, we already, you know, and we can try this by running um, a task directly to see if it gets blocked or not. But basically, as you can see, there's a very simple policy which is saying, you know, everything should run into, you know, with a bundle and don't allow, you know, bare tasks to be executed, right? So let's, let's give that a try. I'll, we don't need to watch this. So if I do, um, let's try, We'll actually do a create. And what I want to do is in my policies, I have some test resources. And if I look at that, what I want to do is to just say, um, you know, I'll just use the sample task run to try and run that, right? And again, what I'm expecting here is that this is, gets blocked because it's saying, first of all, well, it, it caught that there's no signature on it, so it, that policy blocked it. And it would, if that passed, it would also be blocked to make sure that you know, it has to come from a you know, signed bundle, which is stored in our OCI registry. So going back to, again, the set of policies, there's this other set which are now verifying signatures, right? And what that looks like, so it's a pretty interesting scheme because um, what you're trying to do is you're enforcing a policy so by the way, this pop-up that shows is the VS Code integration because if you know everything's a CRD, you get your help right in here. So that's a nice little uh, value add, right? Um, so we're checking signatures here. And the one thing which is a little bit complex is you're not really running a pod, right? So it's, one, it's simple enough to check a signature. Well, not exactly simple, but it's possible to set a, 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 uh, check a signature on a pod. But here, what Kivarno is doing is it's using this uh, new feature, which we introduced in 1.7, 
to extract images out of the uh, configuration. In this case, it's looking into the spec of the pipeline reference, and it's going to check for you know, a value um, with the call bundle and the name, and then it's going to check that that bundle was signed using the key that you're declaring over here. So now this key could be in a config map or somewhere else, but ideally what you, now what this policy is doing is it's you know, going through all of the, you know, the um, actual runtime configurations, it's looking in there and into the spec, checking for all of the, you know, the sign bundles and then verifying the signature. So similarly here, this one's a little bit different because now we're looking at task runs. So remember there's pipelines, there's tasks, and there's steps. And each one needs to be verified. You want to make sure each one can be trusted and executed. So similarly, we're checking whether the task reference is coming from a signed pipeline. And finally, you know, for the steps, uh, here there's a check to say that for each step, make sure that if once you extract the image, the image is also signed and verified, right? And in addition, we're checking for a predicate. One of these things, I've commented this out because we actually found that uh, one of the step has a high severity vulnerability, so that was blocked. Um, and there are you know, ways to kind of you know, allow that exclusion. But what we did for this demo is we just commented this out, but we're checking that every you know, step here it has an attestation which is in you know which is actually a vulnerability scan uh, created in this case by Gripe, right? So you could use whatever tool you want, and then you can write if you were to kind of check for vulnerabilities in the policy, it would look something like this, where you're looking inside the JSON data and checking for that payload of that attestation, or in fact in the predicate um, to make sure that uh, you know you're in this case. We want to make sure that there's no severity higher than eight. Uh, available or in that report itself, right? So those are all of the things that would um, be enforced. One last thing I want to show, and we'll check on our pipeline too, is I want to actually run an unsigned pipeline or a pipeline which is not uh, from a valid you know, repo, right? So what I did was I just copied this pipeline that Shripad created, and I pushed it into my registry, uh, my private registry, or uh, I guess my GitHub, you know, registry and I want to try and execute that just to see what happens, right? So let's go ahead and create another namespace. We'll call it run three. Uh, and then what we'll do, is we're gonna run now this unsigned pipeline, right? So just to show what exactly that is. So if I go back to, um, here, this is our sign pipeline, and if we go to unsign, what we should see is it's using a different image registry to run, execute this pipeline bundle, right? So what should happen is, again, because of that you know, missing signature check, that should get blocked. Um, so let's go ahead and try that. Yeah, so here we're seeing one of the, you know, because we are using a public key to match it, saying there's no valid signatures, which internally Kiverno integrates with Cosign from SigStore. It's making that call and validating that pipeline bundle itself, right? So that's more or less how you would go ahead and secure this entire pipeline. As you can see here, we're, it's still continuing. It's towards the final steps of it completing. So again, depending on, you know, because it pulls a lot of information, uh, these, uh, it might take a little bit longer to complete. But I think, you know, overall the idea or should be fairly, you know, I guess, clear through the policies, et cetera, in terms of what needs to be checked. So with that, let's go back, you know, into the slides and we'll wrap up and, uh, and we'll come back and check um, on the execution maybe after. Sripad, if you wanna, Summarize? Yeah, so, uh, I mean, to summarize, here we are talking about Tecton, right? But uh, as we mentioned, right, it's applicable to other CI systems. But Tecton is a powerful CI CD solution, right? It's built and uh, operated natively on Kubernetes. CI system needs to be secure, right? We need to treat them just like our production workload. 
and not just the uh, integrity, but also the configurations. We need to make sure they are configured properly. Whatever we are executing, uh, they are signed. They can be trusted. And of course, the Kiverno policies are the perfect fit to achieve this, right? Which allows us to perform the validation, mutate, generate, and uh, verify images. And uh, all this demo, it's available on the GitHub. So uh, if you want to try it out, it has instructions. All the policies are there. Uh, you, you can try it. Any closing notes, Jim? No, let's just check one more time to see if the pipeline completed. Uh, but uh, otherwise, you know, I think we're done with what we wanted to demo. And happy to take any questions. I think it actually completed. Yeah. All the tasks are done. The pipeline is done. So there you go. Yeah. All right. Any questions, thoughts, feedback? Thank you. Thank you. Um, yes, it, it is actually in the Git repo itself. Uh, so yeah. But don't use it as is. Create your own, please. You know. <laughs> Any other questions from anyone? All right, if not, yeah. thank you very much. Thank Take you. care.